Hello music lovers and welcome back to the woodshed. Okay, so you guys always are hitting me up about like right hand technique and I've had some great uh, experiences this weekend with some of our woodshed Patreon members doing some Q&A on how do you improve speed? How do you improve technique? Andy, how did you work on this? What exercises did you do, etc.? I never worked on exercises. A lot of my technique came from being in love with other instruments, mandolin, banjo, fiddle, dobro, those bluegrass instruments and hearing those sounds as a kid, that was always rolling through my head. Now, one thing that's interesting to me is we guitar players, we see another guitar player do something. Uh, we, we see them do some really hot picking or whatever. And we're like, oh man, I want to learn how to do that. And we immediately start molding our technique to mimic that player's technique. My technique wasn't developed by chasing what something else looked like because I was learning a lot of banjo lines and a lot of mandolin lines and dobro lines and fiddle lines on guitar. So with that being the situation, I didn't really have a right hand technique to copy because I was trying to learn Bela Fleck licks. So let's take a little time warp to one of my favorite Bela Fleck moments New Grass Revivals Can't Stop Now. I'm going to play along with the album, and then I'm going to talk to you about how learning Bela Fleck banjo lines helped me become the alternate picker that I am, and hopefully you guys can take something valuable away from it. Let's roll that Can't Stop Now footage. I might be headed for a breakdown. Okay guys, uh, this is going to be kind of fun because I'm going to use a distorted tone, kind of a rock tone. Um, my right hand technique is built, like I said in the intro, on bluegrass fundamentals and learning licks from instruments that aren't the guitar. And it's one thing to watch Steve Morse play and that, that thing he's got going on, right? Or maybe uh, Aldi Mill and John Petrucci have the more this thing going on. When we see our guys our favorite guys play, we can emulate what they do by, you know, being mimicking it, right? Unfortunately, your right hand may not develop because it doesn't feel like theirs feels. Um, you can't always go on what something looks like, and sometimes you can't go uh, on, on even the approach that someone's got, whether they got on their left leg or the right leg, any of that stuff, you have to go on what feels good. It's a lot like riding a bicycle. Uh, you can tell someone how to ride a bike, you can show them how to ride a bike, but until they feel it from themselves, it's never going to work. This is a lot like alternate picking. So let's take a look at the intro to um, Can't Stop Now. I'm going to talk you through it, and it's a really cool uh, way to look at how you can incorporate this banjo line to become a better alternate picker. Now, when I was learning this, I learned it as a kid, and I honestly don't even remember if I'm using the same fingerings I used as a kid. But what's interesting is that when you're learning something that's not built on this instrument, you're having to, you actually have a little bit of liberty, right? You don't have the the constraints of this is how this guy's doing it and where he's doing it. You have this open playground to play in and find the one that works for you. And this is the the, the right hand technique and the uh, notes on the fretboard that worked for me in playing this. Now you can hide, there's, there's some ways to do some workarounds where you can use some hybrid picking or some pull offs to make this easier. But while I teach it to you, I'm just going to alternate pick it. Um, for me, um, 
having the ability to alternate pick something is very valuable. Uh, that freedom, right? Not being tense in the arm. So let's talk about the intro. The song is in the key of B, as a lot of bluegrass is, right? And we're going to start um, kind of outlining a sus4 kind of sound. Now, if you don't know what that means, that's just a B chord like this. And we're going to add the 4, which is E. B, C, D, E. Four, quattro. That would be like the all-wheel drive, right? The four. Sus four is like that sound. Let's listen to it. Let's move it up an octave. Same thing, right? So where does it sound? That's how I'm doing it, right? So instead of going, instead of doing it like that, I'm doing, right? So we got two notes, one, three up to the kind of kind of mixolydian sound very sequenced out I'm gonna play it up to speed so I just got my mind right yep got that much of it we're gonna go really you're just playing five notes it's the root the third the sus4 um, oh, you could also call that the 11 right um, the, the, the five there and the flat seven which is a one more time for you Now, let's pause real quick and let's talk about when I was when I work on stuff like this, I'm not just trying to be a parrot and regurgitate it. I want to look at this as options to play. So maybe we have So I'm, I'm looking at ways to just have some fun. As I'm learning something, it's not just about regurgitation. It's about looking at how I can have some fun and incorporate these shapes and the sound into my playing. Also just alternate picking through different combinations to make different melodies. That is the thing that I focused on as a kid to improve my right hand. I wasn't thinking about exercises. I wasn't thinking about do this five times a day and you can alternate pick your butt off. Like it wasn't like that. It was thinking about music, creativity, working on all of those things, working on clarity. Um, note clarity was a big one. Working on note clarity, it's like almost I got fast as a byproduct of that, right? So let's take that again. Now here's the back half of it. So you're looking at this like uh, chromatic sound from the seven. And now this is where you can use your uh, hybrid and a pull off. Like that. Or you can pick it. Now, okay. On the banjo, if you listen to the record, uh, you'll hear that he's playing it and the notes are on different strings. It's the nature of the tuning of the banjo. This is what I was talking about in the intro, where you have to overcome the nature of the tuning of something to be able to play the correct harmony, to be able to play the correct notes. Okay, so some workarounds that are easy um, are just sliding from minor third to major third, like that, or hammering on. Here's several different fingerings. Sorry, one more time. Right, uh, another one. Um, I, I think I just did a little quick slide on the intro. So let's play it all together slow.
That's the fingering that I really liked. So one more time, let's work on that and play it really slow and really even. Position shift. If you guys want a deeper dive and learn some of the cool chromatic stuff that uh, that happened in the play along or learn some of the ways that I was framing the E chord, if you want to learn some of that stuff, jump over to Patreon and I will make a video talking about the rest of the solo over there. I hope you dug this and I hope it is a way to uh, be an example, right? This isn't so much just to spoon feed you a lick, it's more to be an example. Find something that you love on an instrument that's not the guitar. Learn that on the guitar and alternate pick your way through it, uh, trying to emulate the sound and the intensity and get the notes clear. You'll find that you get faster as a byproduct. Working on all these other things, working on musicality will improve your technique. When you work on technique, it doesn't necessarily improve your musicality. So that's what I want to leave you with. Work on music, technique will catch up. You put technique first, Mm, musicality might not catch up. All right, it's uh, as Ben Eller says, you'll be all dressed up with nowhere to go, right? Take that, hope you enjoy it, talk to you soon. Okay, a little housekeeping here. If you're interested in diving deeper, jump over to patreon.com slash Andy Wood Music. Uh, I have weekly live Zoom masterclasses. That's Q&A. That's where a lot of this topic came from. I also have the ability to take some one-on-one -on -one lessons uh, at the highest tier. And then even at the most basic $5 tier, you get access to over 300 exclusive videos. It's a good value. Patreon.com slash Andy Wood Music. You also get aspects patches and delay settings and all those tone things as well. Now, if you're interested in downloading uh, transcriptions, tabs, uh, hitting up all that kind of stuff, go to andywoodmusic.com, sign up for the email letter. Uh, you can see where I'm playing and who I'm on tour with and come hang out live. One last thing let's talk about. It's going to be so sick at the end of August, the Woodshed Guitar Experience. It is my guitar nerd mecca. It's the retreat of retreats. It's on a beautiful lakefront property right outside of Nashville. It's four days, three nights, and we've got some of the sickest players on the planet coming. We've got Brent Mason, Nick Johnston, Mark Letary, Tom Quell, Martin Miller, Greg Cock, and more. Uh, just got Rhett Scholl, if you like Rhett Scholl's channel. He's going to be coming and hanging out with us. Guys, it's super, super limited. I want everyone that comes to have the VIP experience not feel rushed and pressured to talk to your favorite players. So it's limited only to 120 slots. Now, obviously, we've been selling slots, so please... If you're interested, go to woodshedguitarexperience.com. When you pay for the event, that covers your lodging, your food, your alcohol, all the lessons, three concerts with all the players, jam-alongs, we're doing gear giveaways. It's going to be amazing. Woodshedguitarexperience.com. Thank you for hanging out this week in the woodshed. We'll see you real soon.